Okay, what's going on? It's 8.50 in the morning. It is the 7th of April, 2023. It is Friday. Theoretically, they call it Good Friday. I'm not quite sure if I follow that follow, that logic there for being good, but it is what it is. An anniversary long ago where the death of a good man and we all as Christians celebrate and we get our our religious beliefs named after and the ways we try to follow we were at John C. Roseman, California and I am not the Christ never have been never will be it had occurred to me on days like this it was only meant for being somber and retrospect about it. Easter would come up and it would be the time that family would let's say happy Easter break out the eggs put them into a potato salad or mash them up into, into a mash where we could use it as uh, egg salad or deviled eggs or whatever Candy would be eaten on Sunday. Not all of it, but just length of it. But there was always a church service to go to. At least back in the days long ago. There have been times of watching services at the Hollywood Mall a long time ago as a kid. And then going out for Denny's for Easter brunch. I can tell you that feeling the weight of the memories really didn't exactly help me very much. At least not right now, anyway. And how I'm feeling. Well, let's just say I'm still feeling heavy in my heart. I'm not enlightened that because in a few days Christ will be rising from the dead as he had, well, as he did a long time ago. Everyone kept ex expecting him to show up any day to freak people out. What better way to freak people out would be on Easter Sunday. The story of the Master still comes in my head every so often. A way of reminding myself of what things are important. A woman's vain attempt to clean up her hovel and ignoring the pleas of those who need assistance. Hoping that she please the Lord to get whatever gifts he was going to bestow. I remember realizing that helping others would be a gift. Because it was needed and it was a service. I still may be questioned about some of the things I... Oh, let's go off and give me just one second. The morning coffee and its rifle container. A thermos. A woman struggled all day to make sure her place was in order, but not being reminded that she still needed to help people out left and right. And for me, understanding about people left and right would be considered. Uh, something we have, we are stewards to do. 
and then expecting a reward after that? It wasn't rewards I was looking for when I helped. It was my job, my duty. And sometimes I kept asking myself and questioning, did I do it right? It's not the intent I was going to be thinking about. It was about whether or not I did it right. Did I do it right for Ma? Did I do it right for Dave? Did I do it right for Grandma or Aunt May? Did I do it right? Not technique, but intent and heart. Did I screw up somewhere in there that made me feel like I had failed him one way or another? If Christ were to come into the home during those times, how would he have judged my, me and my family? Was he coming into our homes without us realizing it? The thing is, a woman in the story was looking for the gifts, looking for the goodies, the judge keys and stuff. I still feel like I failed. I know David would, would have an argument with me concerning about me going to school and taking care of him at the same time and if he was going to get that worse he knew what I was going to do. It ticked him off because he wanted me to continue what I started and I had the intent of doing so but after I took care of him because to me he was my world. I took care of Ma because I had to because I was backing up my brother but also I was working. Get money in a household for survival. That was my job in the back of my brother whenever I could. <laughs> he carried the load and he carried the brunt of it. But he still needed some of the work with him on it. I don't know if I did a better job at it or not, but I know I did screwed up things in my, my life. I did. And I'm quite sure if I did it right or not. I'm asking myself, am I doing it right now? Am I, I'm not thinking about self-sacrifice or anything else like that. I just keep asking myself, even for a holiday that's, holiday shit, a time in our lives where we have to think and reflect and I'm not quite sure if I'm reflecting enough on it. Or maybe I'm reflecting in the wrong way. Christ eventually did come to the woman. And she pleaded with him. She was sorry. She didn't know about all those people that came to her that needed help. He forgave her, but any of the kind of gifts that she was going to get, she wasn't. Because she didn't show an open enough heart. And... I had to keep asking myself the same situation. It's one thing to be kind enough to your friends. That's strange, it's a different thing altogether. And in Christ, there's supposed to be no strangers. And all God's children are here to serve, with the, you know, serve each other when we can. I know I feel like I'm a full of an idiot. I know I am. I 
the day where he was giving his last greatest gift to all of us. For those who actually believe. I'll believe. I had no choice a long time ago. I still bear the mark on my chest. The scar. It's still there. I'm still wondering if I... It's not worrying about if I did good in front of him. If It's not people pleasing me. It's my family I'm worried about. But I suppose my brother and my mother would tell me that I'm doing all right. You're doing fine, John. Yeah. Some days don't feel like it. Other people are going through the holidays and they're feeling it because they don't have their loved ones with them. That's a hell of a trigger to go through in the mornings, I'll tell you that much. And how am I feeling this? I'm still alive, still awake, and still under asking myself and trying to understand. I guess if Christ was here with me, I wouldn't know what to ask him. Except the only things were in my inside my heart. Inside my heart. And I guess I'd wear my heart on my sleeve because my tear my tear stains would be on them. As he says, I'm sorry. Every time I'm crying, I'm, I'm saying sorry to God. I'm saying sorry to Jesus that I'm doing, going through this. Some people would make it into a special day for this, this day. I'm not feeling it. I feel sad. I feel the grief. I don't feel the joy of the day that said it would be the day for resurrection, uh, memorial, you know, commemorating resurrection and as Christians we celebrate it one way or another. I have ham. I'll have to fix potato salad or something of equivalent. But how I'm feeling about myself is tear myself apart over this. I'm having an issue. <laughs> it ain't with others, it's with me. I suppose me and God. And I hold it, hold, hold it against him. It's just... I'm not feeling it. I'm not. Should have been a should have been something else. <sighs> it was a hard one this time. It was a harder process for me dealing with it. Christmas was just as bad. Not because of the religious implications of it, but because I still miss family. And holidays that pick up like this, the ones that my family had celebrated with. The memories are there. And they still are like a son of a bitch. Uh, I don't drink and I don't use over this stuff. But it's a hell of a lot of crying. It's a hell of a lot of sharing this pain. 
the communicators be the people because people will be embarrassed. People are embarrassed about their own pain. I know I am. But I had to keep doing these logs and I had to keep talking about this. It helps with the healing process regardless of how I think about it or feel about it. Keeping it inside usually what tears a person apart more and more. I know because I've been tearing myself apart more and more on days like these. And not talking about it, not getting through the process, not sharing about it. Not going through the experience, strength, and hope, if there is any hope. Of how to survive it, how to deal with it, just a day at a time, or even a minute at a time. <laughs> I know I still have a follower out there who checks on me every so often. Appreciative. He still wants me to get the damn things labeled his way. Sorry, pal. I don't feel like they're necessary to get them labeled when I feel like they're getting labeled. <laughs> and on some days, they are what they are, like I am. I'm not someone else's expectations. I'm dealing with my own. Easter Sunday coming up. And it's going to be those days that hopefully I'll be ready for. Ready, yes, and trying to get the candy and egg basket going was a thing in it or something. Uh, well, for a long while, after Ma died, I had a picture of her in it. And then when David died, I had to get a picture of him and Ma in it. Made it special, made it more unique. I need to get a better picture for it, but I don't have one. And if I actually had a big physical picture, I'd put it in there. As a reminder to myself that some things are important, some things are worth it. I could wake up in the morning and realize that God is doing for my life than what I'm not sure what the hell I'm doing anymore. I still have to put my faith and trust in Him because if I don't, I'm going to be screwing myself over one way or another, and He knows that too. He knows I won't. Sometimes I feel like I'm indescribable in feeling and thought and action. I'm not sure what the hell I'm doing anymore. I feel like I've screwed things over in my life and I felt ashamed and alone. It's times like these I have to go for more reflection and if I have to cry my eyeballs out and pray like crazy, I'll do that too. The only thing I can do. I'm not saying I, I don't want life. I like life. I'm not as, je as happy and go lucky as a lot of people would when they're enjoying life. <clears throat> I like breathing, I like waking up and feeling I've still got aches and pains in my bones, even though I may not like the aches and pains in my bones, I still got them. <clears throat> but it's important for me to understand that I got aches and pains in my bones because it tells me one thing, I'm still alive physically. But in my life spiritually and mentally, it's a different story altogether, especially when I feel like I just want to crawl somewhere and just not come out of a hole and... Sometimes I can be in the presence of people, physically, but still be in the hole. Still feel like a ghost and still feel like I'm putting it up with the veneer and the facade to show people what the hell is going on. The deal with physical back pain that I have these days. Once in a while, I still have to deal with this. But to deal with the pain of my heart and deal with the psych, that's a different story altogether because there is no medications for that. I mean, you can try to balance out the neurochemistry. You can try to balance out the uh, your levels. But are they really helping you? Well, some scientists say they are. Excuse me one quick second. Yeah.
Paper towels come in handy, especially when one doesn't have any tissue to deal with. And I have to look at myself in the mirror and sometimes in front of a camera to see, am I here? Well, physically, I feel like I'm here. I feel the nerve impulses going through from, from one end up to the brain to receive them. <coughs> if there's going to be any knee-jerk reaction, then it'll be popping up saying, oof. So my, my hands will move if there's any kind of knee-jerk reaction to it. As I said before, when it comes down for the spiritual pain, that's another thing that is not handled very easily or handled at all. Because dealing with physical pain is one thing. But the psychological, as I said before, that's the hardest damn thing to deal with. I have to look at myself, and I said this before, and I'm repeating myself. I know I am. <coughs> I have to keep repeating it to myself to, know, to understand, to know that I am doing okay for the moment. And even if I have to do this on the camera at this point, <coughs> I am trying to tell myself and convince myself that I'm all right. I'm a pain in the ass. But I'm doing okay. Sometimes I have to move a few things here and there just to make sure I got a camera angle right. But how do you get a camera angle right with the Almighty upstairs? He sees me as he sees me in his own eyesight. And with limited biological functioning concerning about vision even aided with physical apparatus. How I see myself is a different way altogether. How I'm dealing with myself, also a different way altogether. Because I'm trying to tell myself, I'm trying to function. I am trying to deal. I am trying to cope. I am trying, I am trying, I am trying. And some people would say, you know, you do or do not. There is no try. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe people are expected to see action at this point. Want to see something. <laughs> I hearken back to the story concerning about the master. When the woman in the story, and it sounds like a woman because it wasn't a stressful guy, that's for sure. A guy will be going, is cleaning his place up like crazy if Christ came through the door. I mean, hell, if Christ came through the door, you'd be welcome. He's just going to see a not very manicured, not very well kept place. He's going to see a dog on a couch, probably look at him and probably wagging her tail. And he's going to see a broken down old fool, an idiot here, in the chair, struggling to get up. I know a lot of people would be getting on their knees because usually when you're dealing with a divinity like that, you're supposed to be getting on your knees. It's going to be hard itself for me to get back up on my knees, so I'll just sit. Not out of disrespect. It's damn hard to get up from the damn knees, especially when in my condition anyway. But if I would have to, I would have to. I don't have to prove that my house has to be in order for him to get in. The only thing he does is knock. <coughs> and I'll get up and see. I'll clean off a chair for him. Give him some coffee once. Got instant coffee. We got tea. I got bug ridden all over the place. It's not a perfect household. It's not a perfectly clean antiseptic home. It's lived in, it's me. Still shoddy, still in pain. Still mourning and grief. I don't say it with pride, I don't say it with ego, I don't say it 
was great announcement. I just say it simply. It's my home, broken as it may be, or imperfect as it is. I deal, I struggle every single day. But he's more than welcome to come in. I'm not going to make comparisons with me and the, and the person in the story. Let <laughs> me say, I hope I haven't been, and saying that I did this and I'm that. Well, I guess maybe i just been hypocritical on that point. But I look at it as a reminder to myself that even strangers would have to be welcome in. Because one never knows if one's going to be entertaining an angel or something. And how I feel these days. I could use one or two. Even the shoulders to cry on. I think about the story. I reword the story, but I know the story. I've heard it so many times growing up. Now, the funny thing is, <laughs> I've heard it the times while going over to Hollywood Bowl, Easter Sunrise Services. But when I was going to do a few services in the uh, church I used to go to in North Hollywood with my family, we didn't say it. We didn't say it. I mean, we're denominational, we're Methodists. But we didn't say it. It would have been something to hear that particular story being told to our congregation about this one. Because it would have been presenting a story to us about what Easter meant. I mean, yes, we all know as Christians. And we've been seeing the recreations of it time and time again. Either by musical or by other movies. Or readings all the time on it. Our own mental interpretations of what Easter is supposed to be for us. Right now, I got the movie of Ben Hur and certain scenes and certain sound scores still playing in my head while I'm talking about this one here. <laughs> I always did like that movie. I know it was about revenge, but it was also about redemption. Anyway, Ben Hur, I know, was being pissy about things, but somehow. He had to come terms with his own, his own pain, his own grief. And at the end of the movie, he finds redemption. Of all, of all the trials and tribulations he'd been through, it would have been easy enough for him to just to be freaked out and pissed off and upset and be like the person that he was. That's the thing I have to keep remembering myself, <coughs> because. <clears throat> Even in the story of Ben Hur. I always liked seeing Charlton Heston in that one. I may not agree with his political viewpoints when he was alive, but he was a damn good actor anyway. And he turned himself into his own hated enemy and didn't even realize it. And I had to be reminded of that myself because I have people like that in my life that. I still have to reconcile with and I have to make amends to because I sure as hell don't want to turn out to be another Marcella. <laughs> Marcella was raised in one particular format, one particular mentality and to conquer. Didn't matter if he made friends or not, he was going to conquer left and right. I was not of that. I was thinking like Ben Hur about being affected by that influences, by those type of influences, and holding on to the anger and pain about all the injustice that happened to me. It's like, how dare they? How dare they? Grr, grr, grr. So I go through that. But when it came down for the actual bit of revenge on it, it's never sweet. 
In a way, Christ is trying to tell us about that. <clears throat> Pontius Pilate and King Herod had to make an example of Christ. But the rewards that they had afterwards wasn't so sweet. We never did follow through. It was never followed through in the Bible as much as I understand. Whatever happened to King Herod and whatever happened to Pontius Pilate? Did they get what they deserved that we kept thinking about? What happened to him afterwards? We know about Christ's redemption and, and the stories a little afterwards. What happened to the Christians when they were trying to spread the message across? But we never did know what happened to the bullies that did this. Where they felt compelled to do so or did they actually feel like they were pure on this one? As in pure of intent, we know we're, we're feeling the evil. Or did they actually regret the living crap out of it? And if they did, how did they deal with it? I always suggested in one particular movie of Jesus Christ Superstar that the one who betrayed Christ, Judas, He hung himself. <coughs> he hung himself because he couldn't stand the guilt and the shame that he felt betraying his friend. He felt God used him on that one. And he couldn't understand why. But the thing is, even Christ forgave him, I believe. I have to believe that Christ was forgiving every one of us. I have to believe that. I have to hold on to a faith like that. I have to hold on to it for me because it keeps me in check. So even a day like this, I could be feeling miserable. I'm feeling retrospective. Even a day like this, commemorating a tragedy of man's decision of saying how dare you who do you think you are Christ is simply saying I'm God's kid and I'm doing what I gotta do I care about the people I care about you and it may seem like it's crazy or not but you know this is what I gotta do I feel for your pain I feel for you and the thing is, I got great love for you, and I forgive you. I just hope you can forgive yourself. And I have to keep asking myself, <coughs> do I have that kind of capacity that Christ would have to try to forgive others? I'd like to, I'd want to few people over here like to make amends to, but unfortunately the windows are usually closed on that one. Because I feel like they've already closed the windows. I look for a crack. There's a... I think I've done videos about this one a long time ago. That uh, An incident happened about a couple of years back. And miscommunications happened. A woman comes into the place middle of the night running around, going crazy, being chased by one of my neighbors for some unknown reason, which I have no idea to this date. Except she went on a property, and he's on her. She's screaming that he's coming after her. I don't know what the hell's going on. <coughs> I'm here, and I'm like, oh, great, I want to just go back to bed and sleep. The next thing I hear is the damn fire alarm going off. And I'm like, now what? Who the hell pulled the damn alarm? She did. She was trying to get people up. I had to be one of the schmucks to open up the door, and she's giving me a rambling story at this point over here. She may have been high. She may have been not. I don't care. I'm trying to go back to bed and sleep. I can't because I'm, I'm paying attention to this damn thing. My neighbor's trying to tell me, go back to bed, go back to bed, go back to bed. Go, 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 go. I'm like, fuck this shit. I'm getting the cops in this damn thing. She's gets past me. She's making accusations about the guy chasing her. 
He can't even chase her very far or very much. He's a disabled man. Part of his body's not working, so he's struggling like crazy, but he's chasing after her. I don't care. I'm calling 911. Call 911. Talk to the people on the phone about this one. Get sheriff's over here. Try to talk to him about it. He's screaming and yelling at me about that. I don't care. I'm calling the sheriff's. Because the next, thing, next thing I know is I'm already seeing the assistant manager across the way. So. <clears throat> Watching the whole damn thing. Not even talking to the sheriff's department. Well, she good. But she wasn't involved except being a witness of what's going on. How I'm dealing with it. So I talked to the cops about it. And he's pissed off about me. He starts bad mouthing me like crazy. It was a bad situation. <laughs> they got her out of here. I had to clean up the whole house again. But he had cursed me. He cursed. He was saying stuff about my family. Normally, in other cir circumstances, I probably would have been pissed off about it, but I'm looking at this guy, I think. Shit. Man, you are screwed up. And it's bad math me in front of his other friends out there trying to get the support. And I go to the manager, and I'm telling her, giving her story what's going on, exactly what happened, what she saw. And so, I don't know, he's still here, and I'm here, and we still get that divide, that hatred. He doesn't want me to talk to him anymore. I just wanted to get his side of the story, what the hell was going on originally. But he never wants to talk. He's angry. He's still dealing with anger. <coughs> He's dealing with anger every time he keeps passing me by because I see the anger look in his face. I'm still here. I'm a reminder of something. At one time, he helped me and my brother out when we moved into this apartment. And we were grateful for that. We thought he was friends. Well, I guess maybe it wasn't all that deep or real. Oh, well. I guess some people you still can't get to, but maybe one day, who knows. But Easter is a time of miracles of a way of sorts. Even it has to be dealing with inside. That the miracle has to be inside before it can be outside. That's, that's all right. We'll work on that one. How am I feeling right now after doing this nice thing about Easter of 2023? Uh, this is only Good Friday. Easter isn't here yet, but it's coming close. So this is a good Good Friday spiel. Things have happened to us, and things we still have to deal with, and things we have to cope with. My dog wants my attention. So I gotta take her outside again.